Last week we posted on our socials asking you what content you'd like to see us cover on our YouTube channel. And we got lots of comments with people asking for more advanced tips and strategies to take their Crokinole game to the next level. We also had a good number of people asking for more basic beginner entry level type contents and tips. Today we're going to try to do both. We are going to look at three handicap ideas that you can use to level the playing field when you've got a beginner playing against a pro. And stick around to the end because we've got a bit of a tip slash bonus challenge for you to take on. It's a bit of a nick move but I think you'll like it. Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Boards. If you missed your opportunity to throw in your two cents worth of what content we're going to cover next, it's not too late, it's never too late. Go ahead and throw a comment down below. What would you like to see us cover? We've been trying some different things here in the Tracy Boards recording studio, but ultimately we're trying to create content that you wanna see. Make great videos that you're excited to share with your crokinole friends and family. We wanna put stuff up that you really want to post everywhere so that even more people get exposed to the greatest game on earth. So keep it coming, let us know what you'd like to see more of. Now back to what you can do if the person that you love to play Crokinole with is a total talent mismatch. We hear all the time that people will say it is tough to get better because they are the best player that they know. If you don't believe them, just ask them and they'll tell you. I'm the champion in my house. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, I don't mean to brag, but nobody can beat me. Cool. Pretty much undefeated. Oh, good for you, man. That's awesome. I play against my son the most. It's a, bit, it's a bit of a curb stomp, to be honest, but I mean, he tries. Oh, you play with your son. How old is he? How old is he? He's, he's eight. Oh, he's eight. Ah, next week, nine. Almost nine. Nine months. Months. Speaking of a neck move. What's that? Oh, no, I said you're really on the move. Oh, cool. Thanks. Regardless, here are 3.1 ways that you can beef up your Crokinole challenge and make it more competitive and fun even in the face of a talent mismatch. Suggestion number one, eight versus seven. Here's what you're going to do. You allow the weaker player at the table to continue to play with eight buttons where the stronger, more talented player will play with seven. That means that the weak player gets to shoot first and last in every round. Now here in the Tracy household, that does not happen when I sit down and play against Reed or Nolan. They are very good players. But there are times when I sit down with Garrett who just hasn't had the same level of experience. He just doesn't play at the same level of competitive Crokinole. Sorry, Garrett. Sometimes what we'll do to keep it more fun and engaging is I shoot with seven buttons and he keeps and he continues to shoot with eight. When Garrett and I play with this eight versus seven buttons, it really does make it a lot more competitive and a lot more fun for both of us. He feels like he has a chance to win some rounds, so it's more fun for him. And it's more challenging for me because I can't afford to make a mistake because if I do, he's going to win the round. It makes it feel more like competitive Crokinole for me and really puts the pressure on. Suggestion number two bounce crokinole. And this is one that our friend Claire Kipfer from the Scone Crokinole Club recently posted a video of him and his wife Kathy using what I'm about to suggest. Now they didn't use it uh, to balance the playing field because they're both great players and they're very competitive with one another. But what they did was that if the board was open and you were shooting an open 20, in order for it to be a valid shot, you have to hit a peg. If you don't hit a peg, it's not a valid shot and it comes off. What I'm suggesting is you can use this and you, the idea is that the stronger player plays bounce crokinole in their open 20s and the weaker player can just play by the normal rules. It'll make it more competitive and more fun and challenging for everyone. This is a fantastic example of what we call host rules, making a slight adjustment or tweak to the rules to make this game even more fun for you and yours. Suggestion number three, the mulligan. The Crokinole community has borrowed a lot of terminology from curling, but this one comes from the golf world. The mulligan, the do-over, the give it another try, eh? We have family friends who love Crokinole almost as much as I do, and they have quite young kids. And whenever I walk through the door, the first thing I hear is, Jeremy, do you want to play Crokinole? And my response to that is, do birds fly? Do dogs have teeth? Is a bear sh Nope, can't say that. Do chickens lay eggs? Is a frog's out? Nope, can't say that. Is the Pope Catholic? Does a duck with a bone? Mm, probably shouldn't say that one either. 
So what we do there when we play, and what I'm suggesting that you can do when you're playing with littles or beginners, is to allow them to have mulligans. So if they take a shot, as long as it doesn't hit any buttons on the board, as long as it doesn't disturb the board in any way, they're allowed to pull that back and try their shot again. And one of the great things about the mulligan rule is it's scalable. And what I mean by that is when they start, maybe they get one mulligan, one do-over with every shot they take. And then as they start to get better and stronger to put a little bit more positive pressure on them, maybe you restrict it back and they're only allowed two mulligans around or maybe even one mulligan around so they need to decide when they want to use that. But either way, it's going to make it more fun, more competitive and more engaging for everyone around your board. There you have it. There's your three suggestions to even the playing field and make your crokinole at home more fun and competitive for everyone. Let us know down below in the comment section what is your favorite house rule that you use to level the playing field and make sure that everyone is having fun playing the greatest game on earth. Oh yeah, your bonus tip, your suggestion 3.1. Now I'm not gonna say where this came from, but let's just say it's a bit of a Nick move. Here's what you do, and you're probably gonna find this works best in a double situation. But what you will do is you will line up your shot, get ready to shoot, and then look directly into your opponent's eyes. It's like the stare and drive, except it's the stare and shoot. He did the stare and drive on you, didn't he? He got that from me. How long should you look at them? I'm gonna leave that up to you. Let's be honest, this doesn't really add a lot of value. It's just a fun and challenging Nick move. I win again, in your face. <laughs> wow, yeah, because that's, that's a, that, that yeah. competitive. <laughs> oh, is it still recording right now? <laughs> Thought I was ready. <laughs> Thought I was ready. <laughs> <laughs>